Hello, you're listening to An Artist's Happy Hour, a podcast produced by the AT&T Performing Arts Center. I'm your host, Matt Lyle. I spend a socially distanced hour with a different artist every week and absolutely pepper them with questions about their artistic lives and process. In this episode, I called former North Texan and current Broadway performer Brian Gonzalez. Brian moved from Dallas to New York in the mid-aughts and since then has spent time on Broadway and the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee, as well as One Man, Two Governors. He toured with Shrek the Musical and originated the role of Babcack in Disney's Aladdin, which he's been performing since 2014. Now, without further ado, here is Brian Gonzalez. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm all right. How about yourself? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Hanging in there. How about you and your family? How are you guys faring during the quarantine times? <laughs> we're we're doing okay. You know, we try to we try to um um what's the word I'm looking for? You know, I I think we've all experienced during this time we we you have to kind of sift through the information that you get uh, because you get everybody's dealing with the conflicting information and the. Yeah. And the, the scientists and everyone starting with, well, we just don't know. The thing about it is that we just don't know. And then everyone else writes seven articles about how they know. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and so we we uh, we try to we try to limit how much sifting we do. And it's not that we don't want to know the truth, and we don't, you know. But we spend a lot of time going, all right. I am limiting my headline and info time to anywhere from a half hour to an hour. And then if I feel like my head's going to explode. I go and rant for a minute. We go and rant for a minute to each other, and then we move on with our lives and yeah. continue homeschooling our child and, and uh, you know, enjoying our family and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're, we're trying to stay on top of that. That's a that good being, idea. <laughs> it, it, it's been good. It's been helpful. Um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, we have to just go rant in writing. Uh, you being a writer yourself, I'm sure you can relate to that. And uh, uh, we, we, uh, we just go off and we type furiously into our phones for when we come back and we can have some tea and relax. Uh, but, uh, um, but we're doing okay. Otherwise, like I said, we, we have been very fortunate when the, um, when the outbreak, or when the pandemic really kicked into full gear, um, some of us on, on Broadway sort of saw it coming, uh, especially once it, once it hit the, the fan with the, with the usher uh, that had been exposed and was sick with it and, and had worked two or three shows. And, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, there was a there was a it started with an usher that finally which basically meant, OK, it, it is in our Broadway houses. Uh, and then uh, if I remember correctly, I think pretty much, you know, the cast of Moulin Rouge got sick uh, oh. and uh, give or take, you know, um, not, not to be unfa- unfactual, but you know, sure. <laughs> a, a, a good portion of them, you know, got laid flat. There's a couple of articles by Danny Burstein who, who was playing uh, Ziedler in that. Uh, very, very wonderful actor, very well respected, and 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 the things he went through. Uh, but so we saw, sort of saw the writing on the wall about that. And uh, Ashley, my wife at the time, uh, still had a job happening. She was going to be directing "I Am My Own Wife" at Water Tower Theater, and um, that job at the time was not canceled. And right. so she she decided at the time she was supposed to leave in two weeks or something. And she went, you know what? I'm just going to go on to mm-hmm. Dallas and spend some time with my family before this things get started and have a few meetings and just, you know, just, just get settled and, and all this kind of stuff. And if the pandemic's to happen, I'd rather be, you know, with my family. And this was before going to your family was, was a sin, uh, during the middle yeah. of, the, of the pandemic. And then Broadway stopped and, uh, she, uh, she looked at me and she said, you know, you already said yourself, you didn't want me to make this drive by myself. And, uh, so one, and you got nothing to do. Why don't you just come with me? So I hopped in the car at the time and we, we drove together to, to Texas and here we, and we, we pulled up to her, her parents' house in Garland and, uh, self-quarantined for a month. Um, uh, and, uh, before finally deciding it was safe to come, uh, cause my mother had been ill recently and, and we decided it was, it was not safe for her, for, to, for us to bring anything else to her. Yeah. So which we gave ourselves a month self quarantined and we all seem to be okay. So now we are, we are self quarantining for two weeks at my folks house. And, and quite honestly, um, we had to sort of release the idea that we were abandoning people uh, to an extent in New York, you know, like, like we weren't staying and fighting the good fight in New York. And, mm-hmm. you know, when actuality, every single person that we spoke to that lived in New York that, you know, that our friends to, to a person, they went, Oh, we're so glad you got out of here. 
we're yeah. so proud of this. And for that matter, so were we that the, the space that it has provided us, both of our folks live in, in, in houses with a good amount of space and plenty of places to, to either A, have privacy, or B, for every single one of us to quarantine away from each other should we need to safely it's, and still yeah. live. You know? Yeah, do you so, have backyards? So that's been, oh my goodness, the backyards. We've got a big backyard over at, 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 at her mom's house and then over here. They live in the middle of the country, you know, and, and yeah. you know, so we've got acreage, <laughs> you know, great. and a horse. To, you know, they don't own the horse, but the neighbor's horse is always around. And we can visit the horse and, and, and walk the dogs and we set up a volleyball, you know, and, 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 and feel, feel safe doing that. And I think for Simon, my son, especially, mm-hmm. not being trapped in a New York apartment. Um, and, and I'll be really honest with you, both my wife and my son are, are, are empaths. Um, mm-hmm. and so Ashley has, has known to, to walk into an audition room with t- hundreds of people and, and, and call me and go, why do I feel, uh, why do I feel worthless and scared and whatever in the middle of this? I said, I, I don't know. And it wasn't until later that she realized, oh, I'm picking up everyone else's luggage mm. in this. She's just very good at that. And, and I, I know just... some people. I thought that was just part of being an actor, though. It absolutely is. But it, <laughs> Why do I feel it, worthless? And... Absolutely, that is true. Um, it just sort of manifests itself so physically. Yeah. Uh, whether she's whether she's being, you know, at an audition room or whether she walks into a bank and suddenly goes, "Oh man, someone in this in this place is very sad." Um, mm. She's good, you know. And and Simon sort of picks up on that kind of stuff too. Um, and I just think between the two of them being being trapped in a place where we were in a tiny apartment with everyone and their fear stacked on top of each other. Yeah. It's yeah, a big, sad place. city. Yeah. And also I hate to say it as, as much as yes, I, I do realize at the time people were saying, you know, don't bring it to your parents that are older than you. You know, we, everyone made it through. Okay. And, we're, and mm-hmm. we took very good care of them. We quarantined good. from them when we were in the house and all that kind of stuff. So we seem to be doing all right. And I am glad that we're with our families. Uh, yeah. This time. Yeah. And I do know yeah. that there are many people that don't have that luxury, that they are that they are terribly missing their families. I know people that, you know, the parents separated at the time, one of them with the kids and one of them that can't get to, you know, at the time and, and are afraid to get to the other. Mm. Um, and, and that's terrible. So I do know that we have I don't want to say a leg up, but just it, it's it's very fortunate yeah. that we're getting the change. This time with Good timing for you uh, being able to find out about Broadway before you, you know, in time before yeah. she left that was great yeah well, i'm that glad was, yeah that was uh, i don't know what that was fate god whatever it was it was it was uh it was quite a it was quite a moment and you should see our, our, our apartment is very very funny we had some friends that ended up staying there because their roommate got it so they decided oh. to come social distance in our apartment and mm-hmm. it our we, we had to warn them our place looked like we were raptured or something because <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> left your clothes on the floor and yeah <laughs> You know, dishes in the sink. There's a no dishes. We did we did bother, we did clean up because we didn't oh, want the good. kitchen to stink. But there's sure. an unfinished puzzle, and there's movies pulled out, and there's Simon's toys everywhere, and all that. You know, so um, it's uh, it's it, it looked like life just stopped and we disappeared. But uh, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Now I was trying to remember last night when the last time you and I saw each other in person, and I think I figured it out. And do you recall? Let's see if our recollections. Let me. Match. I want to say. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think the last time that we actually spent a great deal of time visiting with each other was in Chicago when I came through a Shrek. Absolutely. Uh, that was it. Yeah. We met for lunch, had a nice long, like two hour lunch before you had to go back for the, uh, I guess after your matinee and before your evening. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. a lovely time. I yeah. want to say I have a memory of one other time when I happened to be in Dallas and we stopped by either the children's theater or something else. And it was a quick, Oh my gosh, it's you. Hi. And, and mm-hmm. we all moving. So I think we have seen each other since yeah. then. What, what is the way? We laid eyes on each other uh, yeah. in Dallas recently, but I think the last time we actually spent some time with each other. Was was Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we should do it more often, more than every yeah. what 14 years or whatever, whenever that was in Chicago, it was like 2009, maybe. Or that just seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, I asked you about the backyard because we are living in our backyard the way the weather is right now, which is a blessing. Uh, every day is beautiful and we've got shades and, you know, sh- or trees that shade the entire backyard. It's just, it's just lovely. And you got to get out. You have to move yeah. your body. And, and, we, and, and if, and if, if as the, as the theories are starting to become a little more true and a little seem to lean more towards the truth that the sun is going to help, 
you know, soak it up. Yeah. So. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you performed in Dallas, uh, for many years before you moved to New York and, mm-hmm. and those audiences here, it, the theater going audience, if they remembered you from something, they will have liked you in it because I don't think I've, I've ever seen anything that you've been in that you just haven't absolutely nailed. You know, you're, I, I just feel like you're one of those performers that, you know, you hit a home run every time you step up. And so do you remember those years? Oh, I remember my time in Dallas very fondly. It, it, uh, it, it formed, it f- was very formative, even at, even though I wasn't necessarily what you would call young, <laughs> it was, it was very, <laughs> very formative, uh, sure. very times. It's a great experience. Yeah. Uh, what prompted the move to New York? When did you know that that's what you needed to do? Well, we, it was something we had both dreamed of and certainly something that we both, um, uh, you know, thought was we, certainly we wanted to try, and and in in a in a uh, as as uh, as dishy as this sounds to say, oh. you know, you know, I, I there, there's enough people. Well, I mean, I don't know if you got it when you were directing, and and some of and when you were on stage, the people that go, okay, when when are you going to try Broadway? Mm-hmm. And and so we had that. Sentence. No, nobody ever asked me that. I don't know why. <laughs> no. No, I don't know why. It's so weird. Um, but uh, well, no, I would have thought with your directing and writing, they would have tried to try to get you to go to New York. But, oh, um, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, my dad. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was I was being self-deprecating. No, I oh, get what you're saying. That's that's like the end goal as yes. a theater person is New York Broadway, uh, and we all have that itch or that thought of should I, shouldn't I? Uh, and I think some people should, and some people. You know, it's okay to do what you, to keep doing what you're doing. And I always thought with you, as soon as I heard that you were moving to New York, I was like, yes, absolutely. If anybody I personally know needs to give it a go, because you've got the things that that play all the time there, the you know the the great voice and the um, the confidence uh, as a, a, a in musicals, but also just in straight plays as well, uh, and uh, comic timing, which is the thing like the aspect of comic timing that you can't teach or learn necessarily. Uh, you can learn some rules about comedy, but there is just kind of an innate thing that you can do from the beginning, uh, whether, wherever you pick that up as a kid or I don't know, some people yeah. are just funny. That, so I, I was not surprised that you went and I certainly wasn't surprised when you started touring with things. I was like, Oh, well next step is, is Broadway. And you've been with Aladdin since 2014. Is that right? Yeah, with this would be our sixth year uh, if it hadn't, you know, to give or take the the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. It's on pause. But, but I, huh? It's on pause. Right, exactly. And I appreciate you saying all that. Um, we uh, and I, I, I know I keep coming back to the, the whole, you know, with com- I, I do, I do recognize very specifically for me that I, I am, I have a confidence, and um, uh, um. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? That I have a confidence and, and and a sense of purpose about comedy. I love doing comedy, and mm-hmm. it is something I feel comfortable doing. And um, but I also remember them them saying it was the the quote. I I learned it first in my favorite year when they said dying is easy, comedy is hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the the guy was on his deathbed, so do you have any last things to say? Says dying is easy, comedy is hard. So that was always very funny. Um, yeah. But uh, um, we at the time um, decided we had to try it. And both of us wanted, had the dream of doing it, and, and and we thought we should we should go. And it was interesting because it was Ashley that basically said, you know, aside from saving the money to get out there, because mm-hmm. I don't recommend you going out there broke. Certainly not. I know people have yeah. done it, but I cannot responsibly recommend you do it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the people that have gone, we you know, aside from that, there is no right time to go do it. You don't just you don't just go. I'm I'm waiting for the right moment. You just go. Uh, and you gave it a shot and that was what it was at least for us. So she went, we need, we've got, we've got some savings. We've got some support built up. We need to go now. And so we did. And I've always been grateful to her because, you know, we might've, you know, I, I, I have dreams of course, but I, I know for a fact that me as a person, I'm not always ambitious as I could be. Uh, the, the fact that she just went, we got to try this and it worked. And of course she, after four months and 200 auditions booked the Andy tour, and uh as St. Regis and uh and that was great but I do I do remind people that 
you know, after that, that was, that was, that was in four months, but that was after 200 auditions. Yeah. Uh, and, Wild. uh, it is. And, um, and then I was, we both worked for actors equity as monitors for auditions. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, in that time, I remember, uh, doing that and temp work and we, we worked all over the place, you know, little attorney's offices and all that kind of stuff. And that was interesting. It was a whole other story of interest, but, um, the uh what was i gonna say oh i auditioned for um mama mia at one point i went in for a course called mama mia because okay. you know it had not necessarily sunk into my brain that this this idea that people give you when you go to audition for something like no it doesn't matter if you're right for the show go audition just to be seen which is actually a, a myth <laughs> and and mm-hmm. and highly unhealthy recommend to people don't if you if you if you have a casting director feel like you've wasted their time you're that that will that will trickle down yeah. uh and of course I, didn't, I did not know that at the time but i got fortunate in that the guy saw me um the casting director and he said uh i'm not sure why you're here but i'm glad <laughs> you're here but i'm glad you're here because i want you to go to this address right now and uh and and do this audition and I walked in and it was a callback for Putnam County Spelling Bee. Um, oh, and, perfect. Yeah. And in the room was uh, James Lapine and mm-hmm. the rest of the creative staff. And it turns out I, they were trying to find a, a replacement for uh, the, 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 he was actually, it was actually an understudy role. It was, it was Barfy, Coney Bear, and uh, Vice Principal Panch, plus a, a, an assistant state management position, should you be interested. So yeah. I went and, the entire audition and um had a really good time with it and then nothing and a year later a year later i was called and, and offered that job so uh, oh. and I, I was sitting there monitoring a thing on and and during a dead space and uh um they, they called at the time and said yeah we'd like to offer this job which was which was great yeah so and that's how i got my start uh there on broadway and coincidentally uh, that's how I became very close friends with James Eichelhart, who was our genie that won the Tony. Mm. Uh, he and I got together um, and became very, uh, he's, he's one of my best friends. And he, uh, it, was, it was lovely to be able to come full circle all those years later and do Aladdin together. So, uh, so that was a real treat. Yeah, that is very cool. The, the perseverance of auditioning, feeling great about it hundred percent sure that you haven't gotten it and then finding out a year later, <laughs> a year later, uh, yeah. and sticking with the difficulties of living in New York. I, I mean, I can only imagine I, I lived in Chicago for six years and that felt like, or maybe seven, but that felt like all of the kind of the, a portion of the cool stuff about living in New York, uh, mm-hmm. like the way neighborhoods feel and, and uh walking and and being able to take the train wherever you go and and the way a city is laid out compared to to a more driving centric cities chicago had all that but it was just a lot easier like things were a little slower there were less people uh there was more space you know uh but that was about as far as i wanted to go as far as that how was the the culture change for you going from from living in Garland or, or, you know, in Dallas, I guess, uh, and then hopping right to, to New York, was that an adjustment? And do you feel like New Yorkers now? You know, it's, it's, um, it was, it was a heck of an adjustment, actually. It was, it was a bit of a punch in the gut. And what's funny is, is I still don't know, although we identify New York as our home now, um, I don't necessarily, uh, feel that I qualify uh to to be up there with the best of new yorkers <laughs> i um uh, sure. my, my actually the minute she showed up in new york thrived um you you know in in dallas she has a hard time necessarily always finding her way around uh mm-hmm. you know if it's, if it's a place she hasn't been in new york she could just go i think it's over here and then i think i'm going to turn right and there it'll be and she was right she just huh. instinctively knew how to make her way around new york and how to fit and how to act and how this stuff and i still to this day have a very uh, 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 not in the not in the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not in the cartoonish way that people tend to do for us Texans. But uh-huh. there is a slower, a slower or, or more laid back energy to Texas than obviously than there is in New York. And I yeah. still have Texas energy a lot of the times. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't believe I'm from Texas because I talk at 100 miles per hour. Uh-huh. But my 
but the energy that I'm used to in terms of traveling and getting things done. And I, and, you know, sometimes I'm kind of like, you know what, I miss driving my truck down the highway to, to the theater, as opposed to getting on a crowded, smelly subway train. You know? <laughs> uh, so those are the, you know, the, which are, which are, I'm sure I'll get in trouble for saying, but which are the Petri dishes for coronavirus in many ways. As oh. as well. But, um, I don't remember what I was going to say, but so yeah, that was a bit of an adjustment. And I don't know that I still have completely adjusted. I have my anti city days, but that I don't, but I don't think that's about New York. That's just me about, about me not wanting to leave the apartment. I'd rather sit at home on a rainy day and and snuggle and watch a movie with my family. Uh, Yeah. yeah. You've been doing Aladdin for six years now. And so what is it? Take us through a week of a Broadway performer. How many performances do you do? What's your schedule like? And how do you, keep up the energy required to perform, I guess, the same roles for six years? Yeah, what is that uh, like? Well, uh, we do eight shows a week on, uh-huh. on a real occasion for a certain holiday or for bumping around schedules. We do about nine shows a week. If you if we add a uh, put-in rehearsal or a, or a dance cleanup or something like that, 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 can, that can, you can almost count that because we, we run the show during those times. Mm-hmm. Uh, those can do up to 10 or 11 shows a week. But I would say 90% of the time we're doing eight shows a week. During the current schedule that starts on, we get Monday off and then Tuesday through Sunday we have shows. And we do Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, which is lovely because then we get Sunday evening and, and I get two nights at home with my family, which is great. Yeah. Winter yeah. schedule is Tuesday through Friday with two shows Saturday and two shows Sunday. It's, and it's, um, it's a, and then they had switched us for a while to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, two Saturday, two Sunday, and then a Monday night with Tuesday off, which, which nearly killed a lot of us. It was just something we never, and it wasn't bad, you know, uh, but it also was not something our bodies really got used to. And then fortunately we got kicked back to our spring schedule, which is definitely preferable. But my rule of thumb always is if I have a schedule to complain about, it means I have a job. So I guess I'm not going to yeah. complain about it. There you go. And for me, my week is, is, is actually, I, I'm again, not knocking them because they do hard work and they make it work with their families. But I'm very fortunate that I actually get to spend more time with my family than I would say if I were a nine to fiver, even with side projects and stuff that, you know, that I'm trying to get involved in and readings every now and then and auditions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I get to, you know, I, I don't have to leave the house usually till about five o'clock and I've had a full day with them. We homeschool Simon, as I mentioned before. So mm-hmm. I get to be a part of that, spend time and do breakfast and do stuff around the house and all that kind of stuff and watch him learn and all that. So that's been a good thing for me. And as I say, occasion I'll get an audition or I'll get a, a play reading to be involved with. And those are always lovely to be involved with, you know, from the ground floor. And, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fortunate to get to do a couple of those. As to doing the show for six years, um, mm-hmm. it's been an interesting case because uh, the, the show changed so much and, and the casts have changed so much. And there's a different chemistry and there's a different timing. I'm part of a trio, Babcock, Omar, and Kasim, and we we were originally written to be in the film, but we are not, but we were cut from the film. A lot of the changes happened when Howard Ashman, one of the composers, passed away, and mm-hmm. Alan Menken had to back off the project for a while when it was the original film. And so a lot of changes were made, and originally the genie was based on Cab Calloway, and uh, we had the three sidekicks and all this kind of stuff. And so when Alan Menken agreed to put the show on Broadway, he said, well, I'll do it, but I want to go back to our original vision, and I want the genie to be based on Cab Calloway, and I want to reinstate these three guys because they had music that Howard and I were very proud of. Um, Our director said, we're not going to do animal people in animal costumes or puppets because Lion King does that. So Mm -hmm. we turned Iago into a man. And there's no Raja and uh, the flying carpet is there, but he's not a character. It's just a flying carpet for, for the big money scene of, of um, a whole new world. So mm-hmm. those kinds of things kept the, keep the show interesting. And we have had several different people come in and out of the trio, all of them very good, but all of them very different. And so for a while there, when I had one Cassine who was a little angrier, a little more of a, a, a considered himself what was was the natural leader of the group my character became a little more lighthearted and was the the fun loving lazy one uh, yeah. with a few sarcastic remarks when we got a costume that was more of a blowhard and the self-proclaimed leader but not really the leader and all this kind of stuff and and was a but was a but not as authoritative my character could become more dry and more sarcastic 
because uh-huh. my, my my entire character exists for one-liners. I do not yeah. spout a single line of exposition in in in, in the show. Because James does the does the exposition, Omar sets it up, and I knock him down with a one-liner. That's that's, that's how it's great. Goes. Well, good it's, for you. <laughs> so you know when they say you know when we get notes like I feel like you're not telling the story enough, I kind of go, well, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They exist to do one-liners. That's what I'm here yeah. for. And I love that. I love that. They actually tailored a lot of the role. That's what was, was one of the things that was so beautiful about Babcack is that I did not have an iconic performance to measure yeah. up to. Yeah, you Most created it. Yeah, and the, the genie and Aladdin and Iago and all that kind of stuff, they really had to pay service to the movie while while at the same time creating their own thing. And that was difficult. The poor yeah. guy playing Iago, who's done Daryl Rivera, incredibly talented uh, guy, producer, director, playwright musician you name it magician uh as well he changed he, he they changed the direction of which way iago was going to go three times and he turned mm. on a dime every single time and did it beautifully uh so those kinds of things are fun to watch and to keep it interesting and then as and, you know after as for six years of it we we got some those kinds of changes in the cast those kinds of the days where there's always someone injured or sick and so there's mm-hmm. always someone new on stage. There's always someone going on vacation and then we get a vacation replacement and you walk out on stage and you go, who is that? You know, <laughs> Especially which role you, are you playing? Right. Like if you missed the, if you missed the put in, you know, I know it's a jerky thing to, to, to think, but it was like, oh, wait, I, who is this person? Oh, that's so and so her, her put in was last week and you were on vacation. You never met her yet. OK, great. Yeah. So I'll make sure I go meet her and be kind. But uh, so those things kind of keep things interesting. And I'll be very honest with you because they don't like to talk about it much on Broadway. We don't always keep it interesting. Sometimes yeah. and yeah. I see it a lot. Of, I, I've seen. I, I remember when I've certain which I've seen. I went to go see a certain very popular show, which will remain nameless. That that I thought was a complete dud. It, everyone there seemed so tired and 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 over it. And I saw mm-hmm. it in their performance. I can tell you that we've had days in Aladdin where people show up and go, "What are you guys doing?" You, you're yelling at each other. You're not listening to each other. And you, this is lazy and this is sloppy. And so yeah, just sometimes we have to get whipped back into shape. And that helps as well. So, you know, we don't always succeed in keeping it fresh. But I'd say 75% of the time. I can imagine, you know, it's human nature to take the easy way at least a little bit. I think the longest run I've ever been a part of was six weeks. And that feels a little long by the end. You know, a little easy to fall in for an evening and kind of half take the evening off. Well, and, and you've all been in the same place as I have too, where we've been on the opposite end of the spectrum. It was like, well, we rehearsed for two weeks and we're performing this for one weekend. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, and it's a great experience. And then we go, and then we go, well, I never really got that show right because I only did it for three performances. But, yeah. you know, at least the, I can at least go, well, I experimented enough to be happy, you know. But, and there was, and another thing for me is, is you know, I've, I've, I've blown two knees and, and had a lung collapse in the middle of the show. So oh that gosh. certainly is interesting, just trying to to maneuver the show with an injury, and in some cases an injury that has never, you know, the lung collapse was was just nothing I ever thought would happen and never even imagined. Do, um, do you mind telling that story? How how did that uh, how did that happen? How did you? We're not happened? really sure. I know that at one point I was I was uh, I had a pain under my armpit, and. And then as the show progressed, I was feeling lethargic and was having a little trouble, feeling a little uh, short of breath. And then that pain ran down the entire right side of my body. And then during High Adventure, which is a number in the second act, which is the trio's big number, there's a sword fight and all this kind of stuff. And the song goes, high, high, high adventure. And, I, they, and I'm the high guy, I'm the third one. And it was literally going, high, high, <sighs> this is all I could get out. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, I could see the conductor looking at me like, that's not right. What are you doing? And according to a friend of mine in the cast named Angelo, who was watching from the catwalk above where, where some of the lights are, he swears up and down that in the middle of the number, I went, nope, and walked off stage. <laughs> uh, I remember walking off stage. Whether I said nope, nope oddly or not, I don't um, and I went to them and said, I can't breathe. And at the time I thought I was having a heart attack and all this kind of stuff. Oh. And the problem is the two guys, the, the two guys that were left to do the number, they had to do, they, they let them finish the number without me. Uh, and oh, wow. the, the guys that were sword fight with me just didn't come on stage because they thought we have no one to sword fight with. What are we going to do? And so I was really shocked that they didn't just stop the number, you know, yeah. but uh, they, they, they persevered and carried on. And then they, they put my replacement on and we, we decided at the time it can't be a heart attack because it's all my right side. 
you know, but yeah. you know, strange. And then I got put in an ambulance and, uh, and I'm sitting there trying to figure out what's going on. And I was sat in that ambulance for 45 minutes before they took me anywhere because there was a trainee and, uh, the <laughs> oh, guy was like, hey, sorry, sorry, this to you, pal, but you know, you got to train them when you got to train them. And so the guy would go, okay, we need a cath, you know, we need a, uh, uh, something to uh, the, what is it that they stick in your arm for the IV? Is that a cath? Uh, it's not a catheter. They don't stick that oh, in your arm. <laughs> My catheter gave birth. <laughs> <laughs> that was a trainee. Holy cow. <laughs> he pulled out the needle for the IV. And of course he's about to put it in. And then the guy way, the guy training him goes, all right, now why wouldn't you use that needle? <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? I can't breathe. Help me please, sir. Right. Yeah. And once they decided the, the guy looked at me and he goes, you're not showing signs of a heart attack, but I believe that you can't breathe and something is going on. So we're going to get you to the hospital as fast as crazy thing is about that is my son, Simon is sitting on the train with Ashley and they were going to go stop one place and then meet me for dinner between shows. And Simon goes, uh, um, I'm really upset, mom, something's not right. Can we go to, to daddy's work now? And somehow or other sensed that something was not right. And they showed up in time to see me being wheeled into the ambulance. Oh, so that's gotta be, how old was he at the time? He was, this was, I found out this was two years ago. So he was about five. So, so that was a crazy thing. And then I finally got to the yeah. hospital and they said, uh, well, surprise, Mr. Gonzalez, you, your lung collapsed, which is not something I expect them to say. I said, how did that happen? They said, well, there's, there's not necessarily an explanation for it. It's called spontaneous pneumothorax. And this is my favorite thing they said. They said spontaneous pneumothorax usually happens to tall, skinny, athletic people that are in their 20s. So we have no idea why it happened to you, Mr. Gonzalez. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> 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 um, ching, right? Yeah. So it was, um, so that was a long recovery. I was out for about a month or so just trying to get breathing again. But I remember, you know, at, at the time they had said, you have to try to get some movement and some exercise. And so I, I remember walking to the park just around the corner from the apartment about a weekend got so winded and so weak that I had to just sit on the bench for about 45 minutes before I could make a, work myself back up to walking back home. So it was a, it was a crazy time. That being said, the stage management crew is one of my favorite things. My birthday was during that time period. And they sent me a video of them starting to sing happy birthday and then running out of breath, which I thought was the, <laughs> the most hysterical thing ever. I, it made me so happy. Uh, it hurt my lung, but it made me happy. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And, but there was one stage manager that was like, I really don't know if we should send this. I think it might offend him. And I'm like, no, you don't, no, no. y'all know. I thought that was hysterical. So you have reached a sort of a place as an actor that is really a goal of most people. Uh, and it is, it's sort of beyond where most people actually end up achieving. Whatever percentage of people actually end up on Broadway is uh, compared to the percentage of actors across the country who maybe at least secretly in their heart aspire to it. But then you hit these places and you accomplish these certain things. And there's always things beyond that, right? There's always next steps or, oh, wouldn't this be nice? Do you have, I've been curious to ask you, where do you see yourself in five years? You said earlier that you're not exactly ambitious and you have to be pushed to places and stuff, but do you you have next steps in mind beyond this sort of what I can only assume collapsed lungs aside is a, is a pretty magical time in your life? Uh, what What is next for you, do you think, and what would you like to see? I certainly have become more ambitious <laughs> in that time period yeah. because I have to see things that I want. Certainly. And I want for, for both myself and for my wife and I and for my son. We have some things, you know, five years down the line, uh, my, my wife and I started a, a quote unquote band, as it were, called Stuff We Like. And mm -hmm. um, we did our first concert at a location in New York. And, um, and it was wonderful fun. And it was great because Ashley and I had been talking about singing with each other and doing something like that for, oh, most of our marriage. So yeah. finally... But that wasn't just me. That was both of us finally going, all right, let's just do this. We need to do this. And so that was great. And we have we have reunioned with uh, with several of them a couple of different times to perform. And we're actually going to try to work on, you know, some some videos to throw out during the pandemic, because why not? And yeah. uh, so I, I'm hoping in five years that we've got that up and going on a more regular basis than we do. I have uh, finally embraced, although I'm not as I, I, I want to ask you about that when, uh, in, in a minute when this is done, but uh, or, or when I'm done talking about this, but um, I, I've finally embraced trying to do some writing, um, oh, yeah. which is you know I've, I've I've had certain people say you should try writing, and and I've certainly tried writing in terms of getting stuff off of my chest, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, just 
trying to do some comic writing and, and, and uh, there's a horror screenplay contest out there right now. And I thought, well, let me see if I can, you know, if I can make myself write a horror screenplay and, and mm-hmm. work it out so I can send it off by the end of the summer, you know, but, uh, um, so I've embraced those kinds of things. So I would like to, it's more of, it's more or less of, it's, it's less of about ambitions as more as I've set myself goals to be, to be better at making these other things happen, opening this door with music and opening these doors with, with writing just to see if I can, and can build up the, the discipline of mm-hmm. to do those things. I, I do not necessarily see myself, uh, with Aladdin. Uh, anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm, I think I'm, I'm very close to aging out of that, but in a completely grateful way. I don't, I don't say that to knock anything. I just, that's just a, where life brings you. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I, I think I have, should the theater be back and running, which I have no idea. By the end of the fall, I, I, I have a project already to be associated with, which I can't really go into right now. So, but I, sure. I certainly see myself, I have always seen myself as that guy that, that works all the time. And I've been very fortunate to be that for several years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that that people go, oh, I love that guy. What's his name? He's in everything. That's yeah. kind of where I want to be. That person, you know, and get some more film, some more film credits. And 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 man, uh, if the big dream were to come my way, the, if if I could just have, be one of those people that hangs out in their pajamas and does stuff with their families and then disappears for about thirty minutes into a recording booth in their home and sends out a bunch of stuff on email to be voice of the part of the voiceover world, man. Oh my be, gosh, yeah. And I, I know that yeah. that's. It's such a closed circle, uh, mm. um, but man, I would love to try to get closer to that. So that's kind of where I see to try to see myself. I'm hoping to see Ashley directing more regularly because she's really breaking into the directing world. And, and uh, you know, yeah, as, as I said, it, you know, she she never has broken into the to the Broadway club as a performer. But I, you know, as as I like to say, you know, maybe we can finally have five female directors on Broadway as opposed to four, <laughs> and you know, someday. Um, yeah. you know, so between writing and the stuff like that, and, and then also to see where Simon wants to go, um, we, we definitely want to con- continue the homeschooling trend. It seems to be working for him, although we do not knock public schools or private schools. This seems to be what's yeah. best for our family and for his persona or personality. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where I, I see myself as just, just doing better about following through on yeah. these things that I'm enjoying. And, and I guess that's the thing I, I want to, I want to have perfected more follow through. And that's, that's kind of where I see myself. So. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Yes. I hope you guys stay stay well. I'm glad you were able to get to Texas. Yes, we, it was it was uh, it was a good move. I feel it was a good yeah. move. I feel, and, and I have no idea. Uh, you know, no, and as we said, no one knows anything about this. What, what's going to happen? So when we get back to New York is anybody's guess. Yeah. But at least well, we're safe here right now. So. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, uh, and. And I'll be following your next great success, I'm sure. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Well, take care. Say hey to Ashley. Most definitely. Keep that up.